Hey, I'm Krista Wax. You are listening to MSB Sound on KFAI. I'm so excited. I have Philip St. John here with me. Hey. Ooh, hello. <sighs> Ceremonious. Yes. It's a big moment. Big moment. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super glad that I got to be able to do uh, do something like this. Absolutely. Me too. I'm sorry but we can't even if it's via Zoom still. I like it's still fun to get to uh, to meet people. So let's see. Sorry, I think a weird pop up on my screen, but <laughs> no, I'm the only one that sees it, and that's fine. It's gone now. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> so we are not here to talk about the pop ups on my screen, but to talk about your brand new album, Sun Indigo. Very exciting. Yeah, so um, Sun Indigo is my newest uh, EP, six-track EP, technicalities and all that. Um, I had been working on it since the end of January after a whirlwind of a year previous to help inspire me for new material. That's how we can look at that, right? And actually... You know, even saying it like that, that's kind of how I approach this whole project is I am just trying to use whatever uh, hardships come my way as my jump off little platform to, you know, transcending it and getting above it and staying above it so I can show people, hey, you don't have to stay here. You don't have to let all these things, these bad things define your life and things can, you know, actually regardless of what happens to you, you can always take something from it. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I love this. I love your EP. I think it's beautifully written. Great production. It's, it's, it's been beautiful to listen to. Congrats. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you like it. You know, I've been slowly getting it out to people and trying to, you know, figure out everything going on performance wise because some people just jumped right back into it um some people are more cautious some people are cautious about coming to the city some people are not cautious and just are like whatever you know everything's actually normal right and for the most part i'm like yeah actually things are pretty chill right now um even but i you know i've been keeping updated with the news and stuff every day and i'm just like oof I, I don't know how tomorrow's gonna look or next week, you know. That's the only thing. But we're not we're not here to talk about fear-based things like that. We're here to talk about uplifting, positive music that I made, right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that is a really important uh, point to make because yes, it's what is going on in the world. We we won't touch on that. We're just dancing around it. Right. But, how you were able to just to make such a positive album in such such crazy times that were happening like that's it's beautiful yeah i think the thing about the process was i didn't even know what i was gonna be doing uh starting at like the end of the year slash beginning of the year i had actually me and my bandmate had uh you know broken up and we, we were making like really crazy music and it was fun. Um, but I was just like, oh, I don't, I don't know like if, if, you know, everything's gonna shut down and like I'll just have to do something else. And it was so uncertain that I kind of just gave up for a little bit. Took a while to heal from some stuff that happened. Um, and then I started, you know, I actually met this producer uh, through my friend, Mama Rose, Charlotte. Um, and with his with his production, actually, he released like a his own little six track EP of beats, and two of those ended up he let me use them for my project, and just you know have them, to, and then, uh, Mama Rose, her partner Tom, played guitar, and Jason played some bass, and I even played some piano on some of these, you know, and like we we got together and we just had a fun time making these tracks and. It was a different experience from before because I haven't really been able to jam out and vibe in a recording phase. I've just like bought beats online and or made them myself. But it feels really nice to be able to put out something that has like a more collaborative energy 
in the music. I, it makes me feel like very happy um, to show people because I'm like, yeah, yeah, you hear that group? You hear that bass line? That was my friend, you know? Ooh, it wasn't just all me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, that's, that is it. There are some, there are a lot of albums that have been released, you know, during quarantine, made during quarantine, all that. And mm-hmm. it is, there's a, yeah, can't spit it out. I was thinking Maria Issa, she made such a happy, fun dance album during quarantine, recorded it, then released it. And I feel the same as yours as it's, yeah, it's pretty tough. 2020, kind of rough on everybody. So that's so fun that you see like someone make something great and positive during such a dark time. Yeah, and it's kind of ironic because, like, before this, I was making, like, sad music, intense music, like, I don't know, just stuff that, like, looking back, I'm like, my life wasn't even that crazy, you know? Like, why am I writing about, like, somebody I dated two years ago or something? I don't know. It was, like, really weird. And then after all this happened, it kind of put this clarity and focus into my life where I was like, actually, you know, I feel like I can approach this in a way that's helpful that's uplifting, inspiring, that's, you know, just gives people some room to breathe from their, any daily events that might, you know, make them scared or angry or anything in between that. And that's, that's what I realized the power was of releasing that type of music right now. It's like, yeah, why not? This is the time to do it. This is like, like we're morale boosters as musicians. We're not, we're not just, you know, try to be the deepest and the most, you know, intense, you know, sometimes I get lost in that, especially being a rapper, you know, some of the really great people that have come from the city or people I've looked up to, very intense and like very heady or conceptual. And I kind of took a step back from that and just let my emotions flow and just hope I can help people heal and take their own inner journeys to get to a better place themselves. I like that. I hope so too. I know it made me feel better. I was listening to it earlier today. I was bopping around my apartment. <laughs> that's that's great. You know, like that's what I want to hear. I like. Um, I've. I think that by the end of it, I got into like such a hyper productive mode that I started writing stuff for my album. And I already had some stuff that me and my roommate had worked on that we decided they were going to give to me. And then we were just going to, I was just going to figure it out. But then I actually had to take a step back because I was like, wait, I haven't even like released the EP yet. And I've been like quiet about it because I'm like kind of embarrassed that I told people I was like going to quit, quit for a little bit and then come back. And I had to be like, hey guys, actually I didn't quit, but it's not like a, it's not because I want your attention. Well, I do want your attention, but you know what I mean? <laughs> So I had to go through that process and it was really funny because I had like a lot of friends who have stuck by me, you know, even just digitally who would like, I'd be like, hey, I made this and but I feel kind of embarrassed that I have to go through this. And they're like, oh, it's okay," You know, everyone's gone through like a phase where they've like felt beaten down or like felt like maybe maybe like they have to like reevaluate what they're doing and they either quit and they find something better or they come back stronger and they they're focused and reinvigorated and so then you know last last month i released this project and here we are here we are it's fantastic in addition to that you have a brand new another brand new track already a collaboration speaking of mama rose mm-hmm. and thomas gordon let's talk about that track sweetness Ooh, we played it earlier we i played it earlier on today's show <laughs> And but how did that all come to be? The track? Yeah. So I I meet up with uh, her and Tom and then Aaron Aaron works a lot, but he tries to fit it in. And we usually do monthly meetings uh, or not monthly, weekly, every like every Thursday. We'll we'll hang out. And that's been the thing that's been keeping us sane is you know we would just still find time to you know be chill be careful if anyone's sick just whatever but like you know still meet up because we just we we're social creatures right 
you need a little bit of some maybe maybe not huge groups but at least like one two three people whatever and you know they were aware that i was like oh yeah quit music whatever but i would still you know show up every thursday and talk to them about this and that spiritual stuff all this wholesome stuff that we talk about like in our music it's what we talk about regularly in, in real life you know it's not a facade or anything and at one point i wanted to see um who charlotte was working with because she kind of just surprised me with her ep that she released um because she had just been grinding away at it and she you know was showing us snippets and i was like wow this is really good like i'm super proud of you like and i'm really interested in this person so we went there we went to uh jason's studio over in little canada he's an he's an amazing producer um he is very like he'll let you take the lead but he'll come in with his ideas and rearrange things and he'll just he'll do stuff like so quick he's so amazing and there was just um that day it's actually really cool um or funny cool whatever but um i went there with charlotte and tom and then jason and charlotte took the lead i was feeling very blocked um, and I actually didn't write anything that whole time. I wrote like, like a line. I, I hated it. And I just wasn't, I just was feeling like very inside of myself and stuck in like these trauma thoughts that had to do with music and the music scene and everything. And Charlotte made like a hook and she started writing and Tom wrote something and I went home and I, I got through some blockages at like, you know, midnight or whatever. I, I kind of like got up in the middle of the night, got a notebook. And I was like, okay, Jason sent me this track. I'm going to, I'm going to just, just going to see what happens if I am in my own environment. And I started writing and I finished it in like 20 minutes and I hit up Charlotte and I was like, I finished it. And she's like, all right, I'll, I'm going to hit up Jason right now and tell him that we want to come in tomorrow morning and we're going to record it. She was like super helpful and super like supportive of me and trying to get me back in the studio. The next day I recorded it and you know, we only like one or two more times to just flesh stuff out. I even played a little steel drum in the background. It's, it's very, it, it's more towards the end and a little bit sprinkled throughout, but it was just really cool. It, it came together in a way where I didn't know if I was gonna be able to write to it. And I actually went through, got through and broke through some trauma walls that I was dealing with in order to write it. And so it actually kind of translated in my lyrics too, where like, you know, I start off like talking about how, like when I'm not feeling good. And then at the end, it's like about feeling like you're open again. That's kind of how the process was too. It's very beautiful. Wow. Uh, That's great. It's such a fun song. It's such a fun, upbeat song. It feels like, it just feels, I don't know, the vibe of it, it just felt like y'all were just sitting around and like, let's just play a song. And then it just like came together and it kind of sounds like a little bit that's what happened. Yeah, it was really cool too because Charlotte like kind of took the lead on the melody too. So it was it was more of just like a, like a very um, close to everyone in the room, like production and making of it. And we're trying to we're trying to pitch it to like you know other radio places and this and that now and just trying to show it to people and I yeah I'm just really excited because we we keep making more music too and we just want to show the world and try to reach people and f try to navigate everything going on but we've been you know just slowly building up our catalog and getting ready and trying to figure out how to release stuff you know because it's a very visual dominated world these days with either vi like either like direct videos and content marketing or spending a bunch of money on like an expensive music video you know there's so many artists these days it usually doesn't pay to just post a track with a picture <laughs> even when it's like a really good picture you know the algorithms are pretty crazy right now those algorithms hate them i know <laughs> they don't help anybody who are they helping <laughs> I don't even know. That's the that's the big question. I'm like, is this just happened? Like, th this is helping Post Malone, because I because I'll see his content and I'm like, cool, good good for you, Post Malone. I can see all of your content and your marketing. I would love to see anyone else's and locally. 
and that, that's funny you said maria Issa released a dance album i don't even i don't like remember seeing that even too so the whole the whole navigation of music the musical landscape today is a very love hate relationship yin yang thing of like trying to do stuff physically but then like realizing that you still got to do stuff digitally but then can you do it organically and does it matter and how much money do you have because that's actually you you just need money you know but sorry if i'm rambling a lot i i <laughs> i tend to ramble and not know where i'm gonna end and just hope i hope i can get there that's why i love writing because i have to know where i end when i write i'm like great i can finish a coherent thought Oh, I like it. No, you're bringing up some really good points about what it's like to be a musician. And there is all this push or it feels like, especially during COVID of this DIY your album and do this and do that. But you kind of face a lot of obstacles along the way too that a lot of people don't talk about. It's, hey, we recorded this at home and we're able to do it. We had the equipment and we did it and it's out. But you're right. What about how does it get out from there? Like, how do you beat post malone which i, I don't want to be. <laughs> well you don't i don't want to the first thing is you don't you don't beat people in record labels and industry in the industry like that because they have this huge machine behind them that pumps out numbers and they have like ways to you know make it so even when even if they like pay for their views or whatever it still reaches people Whereas if you, like the other day, you know, I, full transparency, because I like being transparent. I paid for an ad, you know, like $80 for this ad. And it was, and like, I looked at the analytics and it was like thousands of people saw it. Hundreds of people actually clicked on it. And out of those people actually looking, not at that, but like actually at my, like my views and like the people listening to my project, I was like, it didn't really do much. But you're telling me that, that these people clicked on it and these people watched it. So I was like, I don't know. Some of this has to be fake and very much like, uh, you know, and then you know, other people tell you, no, no, you're just doing it wrong. I'm like, hmm. So you mean I got to spend more money? And then, yep. Okay. That's right. Feed the machine. That's all. That's what it's about. But not to be too negative about it, I think that there's definitely space for you know, holistic type of music and reminding each other that we do still have to physically connect. We can't just create healthy environments online. Online had like a very wholesome, connective uh, atmosphere in the early 2000s to the early 2010s. And I think as it progressed, it kind of got more and more weird and very volatile and emotionally all over the place instead of like uh eye-opening and inspiring and like people used to just add you and talk to you and it wasn't creepy and <laughs> now it's like who's this person adding me you know and it's just like i don't know it doesn't matter and then then you find out it's a bot anyways and then you're like okay well there's there's where discernment comes in okay true very true it's just a vicious cycle <laughs> that's right through. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I shouldn't. I algorithms. That's all. That's all I have to say. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling we it just too. shook our head and said algorithms, and then just moved on. But here we are. Right? Here we are. I know. <laughs> here we are. Ten minutes later, after my ramble. Oh goodness. <laughs> no, it. I don't know if it makes me feel better or worse because I feel the same way with just trying to do my to get you know get listeners to my show as well it's like what you know facebook says pay for you know a sponsored ad i haven't done it yet and it's like do i really need to like how oh. i don't know i don't know you know it's funny because like you know i watch obviously during quarantine i had so much time of course i watched videos on it and like the people who like had were like quote unquote successful they were like all these people I never heard of. And they're like, yeah, I'm just, I just make, I just make like, I don't know, like a, I, I don't, I don't have to do a, this is my full-time job. And I'm like, I've never heard your song like ever. Like, is this real? I still don't know if it's real. 
and and also the ads are kind of similar too like on youtube and it makes me think that we're all just in this giant pyramid scheme trying to get money from each other and the smartest people who are just the most charismatic who have the most convincing points they've got our money and then it's up to you to turn into that person so i can get your money it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy in, and I will not personally buy into that, but I buy into that idea. I buy into your concept here. <laughs> oh, good. So it's working. All right. Yeah, yeah. Give me your money. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. In a bit. Pay for all my trips in my next house. Yeah. Right. Why wouldn't you? You're making an investment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back back to the project and all that, right? Yes. Um, Where do people find your new EP or all that? On all so, the you can find it on Bandcamp. You can find it um, on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, all streaming platforms, really. Um, I have a website, www.psjmusic.com. Finally made a website for that. Um, right now on YouTube, uh, if you look up any of my music, I don't have videos for every song, but like, I have a channel and I have two new music videos and then like a lyric video I just released recently for Where We At Now, my first single, Sun Indigo and Beautiful Day, which are the other songs. Like one of them is like more of my career song that I am really proud that I made. The other one is like very adult contemporary and vibey and simple and also I'm glad I made. And yeah, the rest of the tracks, I'm still deciding if I want to make more videos and stuff. It's expensive making content. You know, it's almost like my friend and I were joking about this the other day. It's like, why don't we just like start a Kickstarter for every single video we make and just like, hey, everyone, why don't you just feel our careers? Because like, what the heck, you know? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> like I said, pyramid schemes. Anyway, yeah, right? <laughs> so, but um, so these first two music videos, I'll just segue into that. Uh, where We At Now was a really fun music video that I made. Uh, over at uh, Mama Rose's house with her kids and you know it involved coloring face painting uh, a, a little backyard fashion show all the things that I used to do as a kid that like you pass time doing because you were like bored right but looking back I realized that those were like the funnest things that you could do and also it doesn't cost that much to do that um, it does cost a little bit it's not just completely free you got to go to like an art, arts and crafts store and get some stuff but um Nevertheless, we made this video. It was really fun. And then after that, we made the Sun Indigo video. And uh, Pete Stude shot both of them. Amazing guy to work with. Um, very fun. Can, can get serious when you need to get serious and all that. Uh, and then I made Sun Indigo and actually shot that down by the river by the U of M campus. Uh, right outside the 3rd Precinct in that area. And... I think that was it, kind of just over in that area and then a few more places in that area. And I just wanted to go to back to that area and then out into nature to kind of bring like an element of like healing um, and just, oh, and also the cemetery because uh, my dad passed away like, you know, like 10 years ago, about uh, nine, nine years ago or eight, or eight or nine. And uh, I wanted to include, because I actually rap about him a little bit. Um, kind of wishing that he was still here so I could get some guidance from him um just especially after like the crazy stuff I went through last year there were so many moments where I was like oh my gosh I wish I had like you know some guidance from somebody who knew what it was like to be you know mixed and in between all these people and having this unique outsider perspective um so yeah you know, I got some lighthearted stuff, some serious stuff, and then this new lyric video is also lighthearted. And I try to go a little ba bounce back and forth. And yeah, I just keep moving. Oh, I like it a little bit. <laughs> There's some people there. Yeah, the open mic's still going. Um, so yeah, um, but looking forward, um, I have a performance on Care 11 that I'm going to be doing on August 20th. That'll be exciting. I have to get up at like 4 a.m. or something. Not <laughs> exciting, but... 
the rest of it's exciting. <laughs> right, right. And then on Thursday, I'm doing the amateur talent contest at the state fair. Ooh. So just to try it, just to try it. Cause I'm like, I love opportunities. I love doing new stuff. I love doing new things. I like putting myself out there and taking risks and innovating and doing things differently. Cause you know, I've had shows at like a, the Moon Palace bookstores, um, the Bryant Lake Bowling Theater. That was like a comedy, in, comedy improv music hybrid show where they did improv based off of the lyrics of the song I performed. You know, like I've, I've always done cool stuff and I'm trying to figure out how I can keep doing cool stuff because I am just not that type of entertainer who is an overall just like, like I'm strictly an entertainer. Like I feel like I'm more of a healer who connects people and connects um, different parts of my interests in life into my shows and the events that I try to take part in and all that stuff. So, yeah. Very cool. I'm excited to see what else you'll do and how your pyramid scheme will go. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm super excited too. Um, yeah. My only question for you though now oh. is, um, what 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 did you like on the project? Genuinely. Ooh. Yeah. Let's turn it on you. Oh my. Oh, I like this. I. I like the beats. I think it was great. Um, the lyrics, I'm trying to remember what drew me in, but I just, it was just, it was just, it was so different from most albums that I've listened to, and especially with the hip hop album, too. It was nice to hear just like a change. Not a lot of swearing. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I think, I think over the years, I've, um, just randomly like transition towards not really swearing and like it wasn't even like a goal of mine it's just like i found i think actually i did i did hear something like a bit saw a video or something about someone saying that like you can say what you need to say without swearing you can say it differently and and like i think i started like experimenting with it well yeah like how do i make music more intentionally where i don't have to like make my stuff explicit so more people can hear it and I can get to be more wholesome and more back to the purity that I think is missing in society in general. Um, you know, I, and I think it, it's, it's definitely helped me like get in touch with my inner child and bring that to people and go like, Hey, see, remember when we were like younger and before older people like taught us swear words. And then like, we wanted to know about all like the, crazy stuff because safety was um so normal that it was boring you know and it's that's kind of how i think about it but it's like well, well, but wait you know like we can still like figure out how to like be wholesome and stuff and have fun and still figure it out you know yeah i agree I definitely what that is what i liked about it yes there's definitely stereotypes or whatever that come about with a hip-hop album and how mm -hmm. not all you know are about violence or swearing or any of the other things. So it's really, it, I'm, can I just say, I'm proud that you're one of ours. Like Minnesota put out this great hip hop, fun, upbeat, positive album. Like I was, that's kind of what it, some of the things going through my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're so lucky to have such great talent in our state and just such a great variety of music and ideas and songs and lyrics and positivity. Like I, I am going to keep going on the positivity track because it's just, it's just refreshing. It's refreshing to hear. I appreciate that so much. And I'm grateful because sometimes, you know, being positive um, and here and also seeing through the Twitter vine and the Facebook vine and all that stuff, when people some people will like kind of bring it down and there's kind of like a stigma in hip hop to be soft to a certain extent. You know, if you're like Tyler, the creator who was crazy when he started, but like is more wholesome now, I guess it's kind of like a journey where people expect you when you start off, you have to like really be aggressive and want it and be dominating and be the king. But I think I was never meant to be that person. And, and it turned into me, mirroring the people who I looked up to. Um, uh, and that was a lot of people who were from Rhymesayers and they're going through their stuff now. They were 
definitely disappointing to me, to be honest, with how they've handled like accusations and all this stuff. Um, that's all I, I need to say about that. But that doesn't erase the fact that they inspired me and that they gave me an idea, a blueprint, basically, of like, hey, you know, because when I first listened to music, I was, you know, being a bad kid and smoking the Mary and all that, whatever. I don't know if you have to censor that out. But like um, where I would listen to like mainstream rap, like Lil Wayne, Tech Nine and all these people. And I was just like, yeah, like this has to be hard hitting and, you know, like say the most crazy, disgusting stuff and misog misogynistic, all this stuff. And then, then I learned about, you know, atmosphere and rhyme stairs. And I was like, wow, this is like, this is different and this is nice. And I had a friend who always played uh, rhyme stairs around me. And I, I remember being like, you know, like, what's wrong with Khalifa? This is so weird, man. And then eventually, you know, there, there became a point where I got tired of that kind of lifestyle. And I'd be hanging with my friends. I'm like, hey, why don't you put some of that on? And then it kind of just started shaping me. And, you know, I came to the cities because I want to get closer to that. And, um, I never really lost it and I never let people convince me that like I need to be something else just to fit in or to be, to be popular because I know that there's there's cleaner cleaner sounding mixing there's like trap like same trap drums that are all rotating there's certain aspects of hip hop where I don't belong also cuz I'm mixed and you know I'm I'm not black so like I I kind of have to like tread in different areas and like figure out where I belong specifically just because like i have a very unique position i think as a mixed person so i, I have to navigate that go ahead <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was just <laughs> saying, yeah i'm sure that it's really tough to navigate through all of it but i i feel like you're doing great can i say that can i say you're doing great <laughs> absolutely that makes me feel good because it makes me feel, hey hell someone thinks i'm doing something great <laughs> <laughs> but i i will since you asked, I am going to keep praising the album a bit. There are, you know, there's a lot of when talking to people and my friends in general too, where I feel like, you know, there's the people are, I don't like country music, and it's always that divide of like, I don't like country, I don't like oh, I rap. Exactly. Yep. Yes. And so I was like in an, not an argument, but I'm defending rap to one of my friends, and so I'm like, it's not all that bad. You can find stuff that is good, and now you know, thinking about your album too can't wait to pass it on to her and say why don't you listen to this this is great right that... keep in mind. i'm like yes there's a stereotype of what type of lyrics and discussion and topics that are going on in hip-hop songs but there's yeah. a lot of great people who aren't doing that too and you know i think that like i said because of the algorithm those people probably even if they wanted to listen to something different they wouldn't even know where to start because because you know it's like they would probably only know about you know mainstream rap or some curated playlists that are still mainstream or old or underground old slash underground that's like the only two category that people think exists and there's a whole world you know like there's nerd core there's there's like people who have hip-hop elements like Mama Rose in her song Sweetwater, she had like a hip hop element on that. Um, she's doing more folk stuff now nowadays, but um, there's there, like hip hop is such a cool element. And I think being a '90s child, I listened to music that was fusions of hip hop with pop, like Sh Sugar Ray. I love Sugar Ray; they were my favorite. All Star by Smash Mouth was my favorite song for like kindergarten, first grade. You know, like with like the little scratches, this and that, like. It's, it's a part of me that I have to like blend stuff and not just stick to one blueprint and look at what everyone else is doing. And, tr you know, I'll, I'll keep up sometimes. <laughs> I'll say that, you know, like there's some elements that I think I've started putting into some of my songs where I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like, you know, this or that. Like there's one song in my project where I used a little auto tune on like a singing thing. And then like on my, one of my singles that I released last year, um, cause it sounded fun and it was, it was, you know, it was good. And I was like, cool, you know, why do I gotta be such a, such an old grumpy man about changing things? You know, I can be grumpy about the right things. That's what I say. Right. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. 
don't have to you don't have to be that I don't have to be that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Philip St. John, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Back in algorithms, the album, <laughs> the EP, Sun Indigo. <laughs> the new track with the new collaboration sweetness and all things i can't wait to see what else you're going to be doing i'm really excited to see what the future holds for you thank you so much and i'm excited to just keep creating and bringing it to you and you know hopefully a bigger audience uh, over the next couple of years so thank you thanks for having me yeah thank 